Hello, today we're looking at Mari 4.6, the latest in updates of the Mari texturing software from the Foundry. I got to work on some images for the latest release. You can see these robots here. Um, so I textured this for the Foundry, it was some freelance work for them. And I'm gonna be going through how I use some of the new features of Mari 4.6 to create these images. Uh, we've got new things like geo channels, new procedurals, some updates to the no graph. So we're gonna be going through that, having a look at my Mari scene and breaking down the new features and how I've applied them. Full disclaimer, that was some work that I did for the Foundry, but this video isn't affiliated with them anyway whatsoever. This is just my personal thoughts on some of the updates, what I think is good, what I think is bad, what I've used, what I haven't. Um, yes, we're just going to go through that. So let's dive right in. So here we've got one of the four variations. You can see the frame rate is a little bit chuggy on my machine. So I made four different versions of this robot and I'll flash up some of those final renders now. So first off, what's the big new feature for this update. So the main one that they're touting for this is geo channels, which is this brand new way to kind of import your bakes into Mari and handily keep them all together and reference them when you need to. So I'm in the object sub palette here and I've got this robot for Mari object that I've used and I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom of this object sub palette and we've got this new menu called geo channel properties. We didn't used to have this. So geo channels is a way that you can import baked out data or masks or anything you want really into your Mari scene and it gets contained within that object so that you can reference it into your node graph at any time that you want to. So what I've got here is you can see I've got a curvature, I've got an AO and I've got a thickness. So if I went into my node graph now, I can reference these at any time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop down a geo channel node. So I'm gonna press tab and then go geo channel and we get this brand new node called Geo Channel. I'm gonna press one on my viewer to see that. So you can see it's empty to begin with, but I've already imported these channels. So I'm just gonna click down and we'll have a look at the curvature, for example, the AO and the thickness. So to add a normal map that you wanted to import or something else, you can just click plus and that will let you add a new Geo Channel here. You can call it whatever you want, so test. And then to import those, all you need to do is click this button here and you can import an image set and yeah, you can find any that you want. So I'm gonna close that. I'm not gonna add one for now. I'm just gonna remove that one because I don't really need it. But you can see, for example, at the, the beginning of my node graph here, I'm using the curvature. So I've referenced that. What am I using this curvature for? Well, I'm using it to get scratches for just around the edges. So if we have a look at this mask, the final thing, you can see I've multiplied some textures and stuff on top of that, and then we're using that to reveal some metal underneath. So let's have a look at the materials being added together. And so you can see now, using that curvature, you could, I've multiplied some textures on top, so it's not quite as obvious what's going on, but I've used that curvature inside of Mari now to create what you would in substance call a smart mask or something else like that. So this is really, really powerful because you can import things like substance bakes or modo bakes and stuff like that and start building mask networks inside of Mari and not having to rely on other pieces of software quite as much, which is something I always like because I kind of like to keep everything in one piece of software if possible. So it is a really handy feature. The, the question you could ask though is what makes this different than just importing those images into a paint node? Well, great question question. The good thing about this geo channel is I can kind of reference it anywhere that I want. I don't have to copy and paste that paint node. So let's take a look at an instance where I've used it inside of something else. So we're going to hop over to, I've got a rust material that I've made down here. So I'm going to control double click on that. And so what this rust material is quite simply, it just is applying rust in certain places. I've made a separate thing called rust mask at the bottom. So along with all the outputs of the material, so for example, the base color and the metalness, I've also got this thing called rust mask, which is gonna output. So at the very start of this, I'm using the AO to create a mask for where to apply this rust. So I'm using the ambient occlusion to get it kind of just in the crevices. Then on top of that, I'm adding a little bit of procedural noise, which looks like this. And then I'm outputting that into a thing called rust mask. And then if I jump back out of my material into the node graph and you can see this has collapsed at the moment more on that later i'm going to click plus and we've got this rust mask which i'm now using in the multi-channel merge for the mask telling it where to add this rust so because i've got this geo channel in here if i were to save this material out into my shelf or export it for somebody else to pick up or for me to use in a different project then this node is always going to be looking for a geo channel called this ao so as long as a different object even if it's a completely different topology or completely different mesh different uvs as long as it has an ao named this it's going to apply this correctly and i'll get a rust mask in the cavities of a different mesh so it's really handy for instancing materials across and stuff like that which you couldn't really do in mari before you'd have to go in 
in and re-import your bakes separately and kind of copy and paste them to different nodes or different materials. So this really helps speeding up instancing materials or using them and reusing them in different scenes. So that's GeoChannels. So this is one of the other variations that I textured, which is this dirty version. The next improvement that we've got is to the node graph itself. So if you've used Mari 4.5 so far with its material nodes, you'll know that when you're merging multiple materials together, it can get like a spaghetti junction because you've got so many lines firing off of those nodes, it can get really complicated and really overwhelming. So here I've got two materials merging together with multi-channel merge nodes. So in Mari 4.5, it would have looked something like this. And if we scroll out and have a look along this, all the green ones are material nodes, and these are multi-channel merge nodes. So it would have looked really something spectacularly disorganized. But with the new collapsible nodes, we can make this really tidy. By pressing in the top right hand corner, you can collapse any node from all of its outputs into just a single one or none at all, like this. And that way, you can make your node graph super, super clean and organized. And then if you do need to reference anything inside of that, you can just drop it down pull something out and then collapse it again. So with normal nodes, it's not super important. Like this invert node here, if I were to do that, it's not gonna change much. Makes it look a little bit more organized, but especially when playing with materials inside of Mari, because you do get all of those outputs, this can really help clean up your scene. And like I said, I'm using a lot of materials and a lot of multi-channel merge nodes. So it would really be a nightmare to kind of organize all of that if we didn't have this collapsible thing. And that was part of the reason I didn't really use materials a huge amount before, even with the 4.5 update, because it just made your node graph so disorganized. So this is a really welcome update to me. Also in the node graph, we've got an update to the laying out of nodes, the auto kind of placement. So before when you pressed L on your keyboard, it would organize nodes for you. And same thing now if you press L, but it just does it slightly better. Before, sometimes it would be a bit junky and it would throw nodes away from each other or it would place them really strangely. Whereas now it just seems to be a little bit more kind of organized and works a little bit better. So if I press L again on all of these, I mean, it's still not perfect. I probably wouldn't lay it out like this and we still got a lot going on, but it's so much better than it was before. And I actually use the tool now and I didn't really use the tool before. So that's a very welcome upgrade to the 4.6. So some slightly smaller updates that we've got is we've got some new procedural nodes. So one that I've been using a lot of is the FBM fractal. So if I drop this down, let's have a look at it. So this is just a fractal node. We've got just a different way of displaying noise, but I found it quite helpful just for dirt and stuff like that. And you can really play around with this to get different results. I found it especially good for multiplying multiple together for the rust mask that I was using on this. So we've got some other ones as well. We've got scratches. So this could be handy if you don't wanna import your own textures into the image manager just to use, to create scratches. And there are a lot of options on this. The only reason I haven't used this node a huge amount is because I found I was getting better results from just using tiled textures of scratches that I clamped and used levels on. It just felt a bit more organic. This seems, you can see we've got a bit of shearing and stuff on here. It doesn't look super realistic. I'm sure you can get some really good results out of it. Um, but for actual scratches, I found using image textures to be a little bit better. We've got some other ones. So we got bricks. Again, it's handy to have. It's always good to have more procedural nodes than fewer. If I was making bricks, I would probably use textures, but if you wanted to make your own from scratch, it's always handy to have in here. We've got some more like checkerboard. And we've got, finally, we've got this thing called curvature. So if I view this, so curvature is just kind of a cheap way to quickly get a curvature map if you haven't got one baked. It's not perfect by any means, but I mean, if I didn't want to use an external piece of software, I didn't have access to other pieces of software to do bakes, then this could well work for what I was trying to achieve. It doesn't have to be just curvature. We've got concavity and convexity too. So yeah, more nodes is always better than fewer. So it's really cool. They've added extra ones there. Um, one really exciting new node is called the projection node. So if I view this, to start with, we need to input a texture. So I'm just gonna go to my image manager and we'll use, let's add, let's add this electricity sign. 
So what this does is it projects an image onto your mesh. Voila, perfect. But why would we want to use this projection node over, for example, projecting through an image with the paint through tool? Well, sometimes you have multiple images that sit together on top of each other. If you have the normal map and the diffuse color and the spec roughness of a texture that you want to project all at once, then using the paint through tool can mean that if you move your camera or something doesn't line up perfectly, you get odd results. So if you're able to project three images, four images, two images, all at once using exactly the same projection plane, then you know they're gonna line up and you can add them into their associated channels correctly. That's the beauty of the projection node because you can copy and paste it and the position of the projection will be exactly the same, but you can just swap out that image. And you can kind of see that on the 4.6 release page. Under this projection node, you can see we've got this kind of sewer grid that's going on top. And you can see that we've got some, maybe it's bump, maybe it's displacement, that's moving at the same time. And so are some of the other maps, like the color, but also the specular roughness and stuff, they're all moving at once and they all line up rather than hand painting. So you can change the projection mode, for example, if you want it to be cylindrical or spherical. I'm going to set it back to planar. You can change clipping, basically means that it won't repeat. So I can make it so that it only repeats vertically, or I can make it that it only repeats horizontally, or I can turn it off so that it only does it once, which is what's going on there. We can change the scale. So if we have a look at this, this projection isn't working great. So you can change how you want it to project. You can get it to project, from, for example, from the camera, or from one of the lights or the orthographic camera. But what I was doing in my scene is I was setting it up with my own projection point. And you can do that here by clicking this plus point and it's gonna add a new locator into the scene. And then after that's created in your object list, if we go to that, we've got this new locator too. So you can see I've already got one because I've already created it. And now this locator, if I wanted to move this, so we're gonna go to, fuck is it? We're going to go to transform selected object. And now you can see I get these tools, which I can now change the projection of this image with. One problem, as you can see here, is I'm trying to rotate the locator. But when I rotate it, it's actually selecting this robot image. This is one thing that I found a little bit cumbersome with creating your own locator and using it for projection. So often what I do is I lock the object that I'm painting on so that I don't move it. So now, hopefully this will work nicely still it's selecting it which is kind of annoying there we go so it is yeah it's a little bit fiddly and i'm kind of having to make sure that i'm definitely getting the right bit of the manipulator tool and not clicking the object otherwise it will muck up hopefully that's something they'll fix later on because it is it is pretty annoying and it's something that i found was happening multiple times but as long as it's highlighted when you select it if i were to make another projection node that i wanted to project a different image through I'm going to copy and paste that. And then as long as I go down to the bottom and it's using the same locator, no matter what I pop into that image manager, it will line up with that same thing. So let's just pop, for example, some of this graffiti here. And if I view that now instead, it's in exactly the same place. So this is why it's really powerful is because I could create a normal map for the where that sign is peeling off, for example and project it through exactly the same and I'd get some nice normal detail in exactly the same place, which is really difficult without projectors. So those are the main features of 4.6 that I use to texture these robots. And you can check out some of the other features on the Foundry's release notes. There's some new shaders for V-Ray and for 3D Light, which I didn't really touch, and some new material ingest tools, again, that I didn't touch because I was making everything from scratch myself. If you've got any questions about Mari or texturing or anything else in general, then please leave them below and I'll try and answer them. I've got a new ZBrush video coming soon, which is gonna be ZBrush for beginners, so you can hit subscribe for that or for other tutorials that I've got coming out soon. I've been Michael Wilde. You can find more about me at michaelwilde.co.uk. Take it easy, have a good one, and best of luck, whatever you're doing in VFX.